Hi everyone, in this video tutorial today I'm going to explain to you how to set up your WooCommerce shop and Xero to communicate with each other. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Xero is a very popular accounting system and this plugin really really helps because when you get a lot of orders through your WooCommerce shop um, and then you have to reconcile all your orders with your accounting system at the end of the month, it can be a bit painful. This plugin automatically creates the invoices as you get the orders on your website. So let's get started. I'll try and make it as easy as possible for you as well because this plugin is a bit harder to set up than most. Uh, so obviously the first thing to do is you need to buy the plugin off the WooCommerce website. Once you buy the plugin, obviously go onto your website and install the plugin. So let's go add new plugin and let's install it. So upload plugin, install now, and once it's installed, we'll just activate it. So I'm using WooCommerce 0 1.7.3. Um, and just to make things neat and tidy, I'm going to delete all the orders, or the only order that's there in my system there. Um, and okay. So we've got our shop ready to go and if we click on WooCommerce and go to zero, you'll notice there's a section here which we need to fill out. Now this section is a bit tricky. The first thing we need to do is go to the zero website to the developers section and we need to create an API uh, consumer key and consumer secret key. Now to do that, we just go to a new browser and we type in a app.zero.com and if you're already logged into your Zero account you will already have the ability to log in. If not, you'll just need to log in with your Zero details. And then what you need to do when you're in this section, go to My Apps at the top and we want to set up an application. Now it's going to be a private application because you are only going to use it on your website and let's just call it Testing. Um, and it asks you to select the company that you're going to be integrating your website with. And I've only got one company, which is called Test Proprietary Limited, so we'll leave it there. And then we have to upload a public key certificate. Now, this is where it gets a bit confusing. We have to generate a public key. Uh, and it's basically a way for Zero and your website to communicate with each other in, I guess, in an encrypted way. But this is how Zero want it to be done. So let's do it. The easiest way to do it is to go to a website called selfsignedcertificate.com. Now, I know it sounds a bit dodgy, but this will actually generate a unique self-signed certificate, which we can then use for this plugin. So, the first thing we need to do is type in our server name. So, my website is dev.mrdigital.com.au. So, I will go there and type dev.mrdigital.com.au there and click on generate. And what this is going to do now is generate a key and a certificate. Now what we need to do is we need to download the key and download the certificate. And as you'll see at the bottom here, they're actually there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them onto my desktop. So I'm going to call this cert, because that's the certificate. And I'm going to call this key, because that's the key. Okay. And we'll go back to the full screen view. I'll get out of this page. And then what we want to do is we want to actually paste the key, uh, sorry, the certificate into here. Or we can upload it. So we'll click on upload, choose the file. We'll choose it off our desktop, which is here, cert. And then we will say that we've read the terms and conditions and click on save. Now this will automatically read the certificate and it will provide us with a consumer key and consumer secret. We'll just click on show and we'll copy that key and paste it in there. And we'll copy the consumer secret and paste it in there. Now we need to upload the private key and the public key or the certificate and the key to our web hosting. Now we need to place these files in the same folder that WordPress is in. So if you use FTP or if you use cPanel, it's quite easy. I use cPanel, so I've prepared this for you earlier. I'm logged into my cPanel account. And as you can see in the WordPress 
uh, folder. I'm going to upload those two files. The key and the certificate. And as you can see, now they're fully uploaded. And if we go back to the plugin now, we can specify where these are because it needs to know where these files are. It gives us a little tip here on the right. Uh, it basically tells us where it should be or where we should put it. And we have definitely put it into this folder. So just copy this, paste it, and then this is going to be the key. So we need to call it key. It's called key, so we'll call it key.key .key because if you have a look at that, it's called key. And if we right click on it and go to properties, it's a key file. So I hope I hope I don't confuse anyone there. And then we'll paste the same thing into this box and we'll do cert.cert. .cert. That's the name of it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it test.cert or whatever or public.cert, .cert, whatever you'd like. Um, as you can see, it's cert.cert. .cert. And then we just have to hit save. The website will automatically tell you that the key file is found. So that's beautiful. Now we just have to configure the plugin. Now, if we go into our Zero account, I've just set one up for testing purposes. We need to go to settings and charts of accounts. Now we need to find out the account names or under our chart of accounts, the codes of our accounts so that uh, WooCommerce knows where to put our sales into and our shipping, etc. So, it first wants to know what our sale, where our sales account is. If we go back, our sales account is 200. So yours may be different, but mine is 200. So I'm going to put 200 in there. Discounts account. Now our discounts. Jeez, uh, I, I don't even know if I have a discounts account because I just set this up right now. So what we need to do is I'm just going to use a different account. I'm just going to put 429 general uh, general expenses 429 the shipping account would be the courier account now look you, you obviously create your own account numbers so then you assign them um, assign the numbers that you have okay so 425 is the freight and courier payment account so if you want the website to automatically uh, also tell zero that the payment has been made so let's just say if come someone comes onto your website buys a product and they can only pay by credit card and their credit and, and the order will only be approved if the credit card is paid is approved so therefore they have already paid so you can basically tell zero here's the invoice and here's the payment so then you don't even have to reconcile it at all um, so that's one way you can do it, but we're going to actually put we're going to put the payments account in there. But I don't know where to do it. So look, I'm just going to use, uh, oh, what should we use? Four two nine as well, just a, just for an example, and then a rounding account. So I'm going to look. I think there is a rounding account here, and there is eight six zero. Okay. Now please make sure that you fill out every single account. If you don't fill out any of these, if you leave one blank or leave a couple blank, if you try and cre uh, use this plugin, it's probably going to create an error on your end. So the way this works is once the order is placed and you complete the order, when you click the tick, it will actually connect with zero. And if those things aren't filled out, it's going to break. Okay, invoice prefix, you don't need to worry about that. But what you can do is you can just put something like shop or something like that or eShop, so you know the invoices from your online shop. Um, now, send invoices on order completion or order creation. So, if you want someone to be able to place an order and it automatically goes to zero, select that. If you want to receive the order, fulfill the order, and then click completed, and then for it to communicate with zero, that's what you want to do. So, I'm going to choose that option, which is on order completion and send payments. So as I said before, you can you can um, set it. So once you complete the order, that it also tells zero that the customer has paid for the order. I'm just going to do it manual because I don't want to confuse you too much. And what we'll do is we will also we'll, uh, click on orders with zero total. So if you get orders which have which are 
like maybe you've given a free order to someone, it will still create an invoice so you can track that in your accounting system. The last option is uh, send inventory items and basically it will, if you use the inventory in zero, you need to make sure that your inventory in zero and your products in WooCommerce both have the same SKU or serial number. Otherwise, there's going to be an issue when it creates the invoice. It won't actually work. So if you want it to do that, it can. And then basically it will tell Zero, oh, look, um, this order's been, uh, this product has been purchased. Take one from the inventory. I'm not going to tick that right now because that, uh, that might confuse things as well. Okay, so we've done the setup. So we'll hit save now. And what we're going to do is we're going to log on as a customer. So I'm going to go into incognito mode. And I'm going to buy this PlayStation. Proceed to checkout. I'm just going to type my details. And I'm going to place the order. You'll notice that I just put cash on delivery. I didn't put any credit card or PayPal, but obviously if you use credit card or PayPal, it will work exactly the same. So the order's done now. That's cool. It still hasn't connected with Zero yet. If we go to our orders in WooCommerce, you'll notice that there's an order waiting there for us and it's in processing stage. I'll look over the order. Yep, yep everything's good. I've packed the order and now I just need to complete it. If we just go back and click on complete, What's going to happen is your website is now communicating with Zero. It's sending all the data to Zero, and it probably takes a good five to ten seconds, uh, depending on the connection speed. And as you can see, it's now completed. And if we actually click into the order and look on the right hand side, you'll see that the Zero invoice has been created, which is really good news. If it didn't work, it would give you another error here. So any notes to do with whether it's worked or not is located in the order notes section. So now let's have a look on zero to see if the actual order has come through so let's go back to the dashboard and as you can see there is a new sales invoice which is awaiting payment if we actually click into the order or into the sales you'll notice that the invoice is called eShop16 so eShop was that prefix that we put it's from the my company name and if we click into it it's automatically added the PlayStation to sales and its shipping charge has autom automatically been added to freight and courier. So there you have it. That's all you need to do. It's pretty hard, uh, the documentation, when you look at it for the first time. But as you can see, we've done it in less than 15 minutes. So I hope this helps you. If you have any other questions, please let me know and good luck.